So once again, Hillary Clinton managed to breeze past Bernie Sanders on the subject of Libya and foreign intervention. And I wish if any of you folks are highly placed in the Bernie Sanders campaign, you would give him some basic information. Uh, so Hillary Clinton is maintaining that at the end of the NATO bombardment of Libya, that the Americans were willing to do much more for the Libyans, the Libyans declined it. But in fact, the Libyans never asked to be bombed. And there is evidence, uh, which I will post at the bottom of this video, that the overwhelming majority of Libyans did not want NATO to bomb them. And in fact, that their initial peaceful protests, uh, uh, the activist community in Libya uh, uh, launching protests were rapidly hijacked by foreign powers and Islamic extremists. So the revolution was hijacked immediately. Once the bombing started by NATO, the vast majority of Libyans became anti-NATO. So it's perfectly understandable that these Libyans would not want uh, Western forces stationed on their property, on their in their country. Number one. Number two, the jihadists that benefited from NATO's in invasion and now dominate the country, a country that never had a history of Islamic extremism except uh, in the backwaters, and Benghazi in the east of Libya had some of these elements, but the West Tripoli, which is far more populous, is a cosmopolitan place. This is what happens when you have secular socialist dictatorships in part. Uh, so they didn't want to be dominated by the jihadists, and obviously the jihadists wouldn't want American troops there because they would fight them. So nobody in Libya wanted American troops there, and uh, uh, the only people who wanted NATO bombardment, by and large, were the expatriate Libyans that had been uh, maintained by the British and American intelligence agencies as an invasion and waiting for many decades. So some of the things Bernie Sanders should know is, first of all, the largest treasure in the world was looted after NATO bombardment commenced. Uh, it was a, worth several billion dollars of gold coins for the time of Alexander the Great in Benghazi. Uh, this is hard to find online, but I will post the link, and it's uh, irrefutable. It's, it was in the Western media and places like BBC. The secondly, uh, there were six million people lived in Libya. One third of these people have fled, according to the Prime Minister of Tunisia and according to Le Monde Diplomatique. A uh, low figure would be a quarter. A million and a half people have fled. What does that say about the type of uh, democracy that uh, NATO delivered to Libya if a quarter of the people fled for their lives externally? Dr. Mabrouk Dervesh, who was a uh, political activist uh, opposed to Gaddafi, who uh, was uh, involved in the early protests, states that these uh, refugees are not allowed to get refugee status from the United Nations, and they're kept in permanent limbo. And this may have something to do with the fact that the whole Security Council is somewhat cul culpable here, because the UN resolution that uh, Clinton and company drafted did not call for regime change. It called for the protection of civilians by any means necessary. The other uh, 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 blowback from the Libya bombardment was a destabilization of Africa generally. So jihadists seeped into many of the countries of the Sahel, in particular Mali, which allowed the French to recolonize parts of Africa. The French still have big colonial interests there, especially the more reactionary elements of the French, such as Sarkozy. Um, so ironically, our first black president greatly weakened the sovereignty of black Africa in taking out Gaddafi without doing a proper study. Another fact is it took me about three weeks from when the uh, protests broke out to find out that Libya had the highest development in Africa, according to the United Nations. Uh, and that made me think that we should be careful about preserving the country in any kind of a diplomatic restructuring or even military restructuring. We should be very cautious because they have the highest education, health, lifespan, lowest crime rate. They had 8,000 prisoners in their uh, jails and prisons. Uh, after the invasion, there were more than that, just political prisoners. These uh, were common uh, criminals. The number of political prisoners generally didn't exceed 1,000. 
So then what we have is we have ISIS and Al-Qaeda operating all over Libya and the most horrific acts of rape and murder occurring on a daily basis. So in addition to these uh, prisons of the jihadi warlords, uh, mainly incarcerating uh, former uh, government employees, soldiers of the former regime, people that were seen to have ties to the Gaddafis, uh, and most of these people completely blameless by and large. Uh, they also keep people in prison in their houses, in their basements, sometimes for years. And this is impossible to audit. But the word coming out of Libya is that these people are abused sexually, frequently. So we're having, this is another consequence of Hillary's war. And I call it Hillary's war because she talked Obama into it. The uh, Defense Department was opposed to it because Gaddafi had surrendered in 2003 to the West in exchange for improved relations, had given up his nuclear weapons program and was cooperating and considered one of our allies in the war on terror. Now, the other issue that's disturbing about Clinton, if, uh, she got a lot of uh, uh, emails from Sidney Blumenthal, who is the father of the great Max Blumenthal, but uh, Sidney doesn't seem so great. Sidney was angling to do business deals in Libya once uh, Gaddafi fell. It also has come out that Clinton declined to do any diplomatic negotiation with the Gaddafis. They asked to set up a Skype call on either February 19th or 20th, and she declined to have such a call. She also said that Gaddafi had to leave the country in order for there to be any negotiations. And there are people on the Gaddafi side who claim that they would have even been willing to have him leave, and they were still adamant about bombing the country. There were 8,000 uh, attacks on Libya, whose armed forces amounted to about 30,000 people. This would be about four people per attack. In other words, uh, we literally killed, tried to kill every soldier in their army, uh, which is a violation of the UN resolution, unless you take the most perverse possible interpretation to say that you can kill any soldier or policeman until no civilian could be harmed. Because in fact, the opposite happened. Every civilian in Libya has been harmed as a result of this invasion. So it's quite astonishing that she's able to get away with doing this on stage. And I wish that if uh, the Senators campaign needed a dossier or a file prepared on this, I'd be happy to oblige them. And I certainly hope he holds her to account next time. The destruction of Libya's infrastructure is between 20 and $50 billion. A great deal of their Libyan sovereign investment fund has gone missing. Finders fees were being offered by People who had no business uh, running Libya, that weren't, had no sovereignty, had no legitimacy, offering up to 10% if you found accounts from the former government, you would be given 10% reward if you could find accounts in Ireland, for example. Uh, so the country has been set back 100 years in many ways. And uh, it is just a crime that she hasn't been confronted about this in a proper fashion by Sanders. Uh, as far as Syria goes, they're claiming that Obama uh, refused to arm the CIA to go into Syria. Well, if uh, there, there is a 50,000 man strong army in Syria, uh, by all accounts, that are Saudi mercenaries effectively. Uh, and what would happen if these forces of Turkey and Saudi Arabia and the US CIA forces brought Assad down is he would bring into power an Islamist extremist government there uh, run by Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. This is what we would get if we followed Hillary's advice. This is what happens everywhere her wars occur. Uh, in Iraq, in uh, Libya, and in Syria, uh, these countries become uh, jihadist uh, uh, playgrounds. Uh, uh, it is astonishing that we would prefer uh, religious fanatics uh, with the most barbarous possible practices over secular dictatorships, which at least preserve some uh, uh, civilized society, allow women to work, allow children to go to school. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.